Hey guys, today we are going to graph sine and cosine functions. Okay, so the trig functions are functions. Okay, you can put things into them, you can put input, and you can get output. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to um, put things into our sine and cosine functions. We're going to figure out what the, um, the, the y values, the answers that are associated with those angles, and then we're going to graph them um, on a graph. Okay, now the input, the things that we take the sine of are angles, and those angles are going to be written in radians. So you're going to notice that your x-axis looks a little weird, okay, because it's going to have your input values of angles. So, so 0 to 2 pi, so one complete circle, um, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And if you go from 0 to after 2 pi, then your values just start to repeat themselves. And so that's all we're going to need to do. So today we're just going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Um, that is called the period of a sine and a cosine graph. And what it means is how long does it take for the graph to complete a cycle. After that is over, then your graph just starts to repeat itself, and we don't need to, we don't need to worry about that. Okay? So... Let's take a look. So over here, you'll see these are our x's, our input values, our angles. So these are all angles and radians. And if you have your chart handy, um, we can figure out all the y values that are associated with these input values. So the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. Um, 3 pi over 4 is also radical 2 over 2 because we're in quadrant 2 now. 3 pi over 4, that's in quadrant 2. Um, so it's still positive. Sine of pi is 0. But then at the very next angle, now we're going into quadrant 3. So 5 pi over 4 has a reference angle of pi over 4, so it's going to be radical 2 over 2, but it's negative radical 2 over 2. And you'll notice I don't have all the angles over here. I don't have the pi over 3s and the pi over 6s. I'm just trying to trying to get an idea of what this graph looks like. Okay? Um, 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1. That's another negative radical 2 over 2 because 7 pi over 4, that's the angle in quadrant 4 that has a reference angle of pi over 4, so it's also negative. And then 2 pi, I'm right back to where I started, which is 0. Okay? So... This is just, it's a T-chart. These are our inputs and these are our outputs, and now we're going to come over and we're going to put them on the graph. Now, to be honest, we don't really need all of these. Okay, there's a lot going on here. What we absolutely need, we need any x-intercept. That would be helpful. So these angles where we have a value of 0, that's important. I would also like to graph 1, because that's the biggest sine value, and I'd like to graph negative 1. That's it. And whenever we graph a sine graph, that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to come over here, we're going to plot 0, 0. Then we're going to plot pi over 2 and up 1. So pi over 2, up 1, that's going to be the high point of our graph. Then we're going to come back down to the point pi 0, that's an ordered pair, pi 0, I know it looks weird, it's right there. Then 3 pi over 2, negative 1, so 3 pi over 2, and then I'm down here to my low point, negative 1, and then back up to 2 pi and 0. Okay, so if you connect the dots, now don't go straight lines, just make a bunch of angles, it's going to curve up, Curve down. I'm going to hit this low point and then curve up. And that is one period or one cycle of a sine graph. Okay, after that it just repeats itself. If you look down here, this graph does keep going. So it goes up and then it keeps going and would keep going and would keep going. And it would also do that in the negative direction. Okay, it's, um, you may have heard something called a sine wave, and that's what's going on there. It's just this wave that goes up and down and up and down. Okay, the domain, well, what do we plug it into it? Anything. 
we're, we're just plugging in a bunch of angles. So it's all real numbers or all real angles, I guess. And the range is everything from, well, from negative 1 to positive 1. So that's our range, including those values. So negative 1 to positive 1. Okay? And that is a sine graph. Whenever we graph a sine graph, we're going to graph those five points. The three x-intercepts, the high point, and the low point. Now, when we turn the page, we're going to see that we can manipulate that. Okay, we can, just like every graph we've ever done, we can have transformations. We can stretch them up and down. We can stretch them um, side to side. We can shift them up, shift them down, all those kind of things. Okay, um, but this is your starting, what like a parent graph. Okay, this is our parent graph. Cosine. Well, for cosine, we're going to do the same thing. Again, let's focus, and I know I've got a whole bunch of angles here, but let's focus on these. So go to your chart and see what those are. So what is the cosine of 0? So if 0 is your angle, you should have 1. That's the first cosine value. Pi over 2, if you look at your chart, pi over 2 is 0. Pi is negative 1, because remember, you're on the other side. Um, you're at like pi, that's the point, um, negative 1, 0, and negative 1 is the cosine, so that's your your output, negative 1. Um, 3 pi over 2, we're back to 0, and then 2 pi, we're back to 1. So again, I'm just using that chart. I'm doing this off the top of my head. That's okay, you don't have to, okay? Use your chart and come up with these values. But these values are going to be consistent. It's always going to be these values. So once you know these, here's what a cosine graph is going to look like. It starts at 1. It starts at its highest point. Okay? Then it comes down to 0. So there's pi over 2, 0. Then it hits negative 1. Now it's back up to 3 pi over 2. And then you're back up to 1. So the cosine graph does this. It starts at its high point. Comes down. And again, that is one cycle. Okay, um, it goes on forever and ever and ever. It's going in the negative direction because the cosine of negative pi over 2 is also 0. The cosine of negative pi is also negative 1. Okay, it just keeps repeating and repeating. But that is one cycle. Again, the domain would be all real numbers. And the range is, again, low point of negative 1 and a high point of positive 1. Okay. Um, on both of these graphs, the high point was 1. This distance from here to here has a special name. It's called the amplitude. Okay, so down on the bottom you'll see a definition. The amplitude is the distance from the x-axis, so the middle of the graph, up to the top of the graph. Okay, it's called the amplitude. Think of it as the height of the wave. So because it's the height, it's always positive. If I ever ask you what is the... What is the amplitude or what is the height? You're always going to give me a, a positive number. So this one has an amplitude of 1, and that's just a basic cosine graph. Okay, so now we're going to look at graphing these using transformations. And you'll notice that I don't have any graphs. So the graphs we're going to do by hand, and there's actually an important reason for that, and you actually want that. You don't want me to give you a graph. You want to be able to draw it. Um, in a way that's going to help you out. I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so sine and cosine graphs, Look, if you look at those two graphs we did, they look very similar to each other. They're just these constant waves. Um, it just has to do with like where they start and where they stop. Uh, in fact, if you, take a, if you take a cosine, if you take the cosine graph and you shift it over like, like pi over 2, if you look at that x-axis, it'll land right where the cosine is. Okay, they're, they're very, very similar to each other. And the shape of that graph has a special name. It is called a sinusoidal graph. Um, not a word you're going to hear me say a whole lot, but you may see it in directions. So if you see that, they're just talking about a graph that has that shape. Sine and cosine graphs are both called sinusoidal. Okay. So what we can do is we can do transformations. We can stretch them um, vertically. We can stretch them horizontally. We can shift them vertically. We can shift them horizontally, but we're not going to do that today. That's kind of a weird thing. Um, so we're going to focus on the other ones that I said. So first off, this is 
um, a sine graph. And now there's things we can do to it. Okay, these other letters in here are going to affect the graph in some way. So the A, if you multiply a graph by something, that's a vertical stretch. It's going to take the graph and it's going to stretch it. Okay, A is our amplitude. That's that thing I just talked about at the the bottom of the page. That's going to be the height of our wave. So if that's a if that's a four then our graph is not going to go up to 1. It's going to go up to 4. Okay, so it's going to vertically stretch it. Um, a normal graph, normal sine and cosine, has a period of 2 pi. Okay, a normal a sine graph starts and ends at 2 pi. If it starts at 0, it ends at 2 pi. That's its normal period or the normal width. But this, 2 pi over k, so there's the k you're going to see right there, is the period of a graph because that k could affect its width. Okay, so this is a vertical stretch. So this is a vertical stretch. This you can think of as a horizontal stretch. Now the weird thing is you're not going to see that. You're not going to see that we're stretching the graph um, like an accordion and we're making it skinny or wide because we're just going to change the way we write our x axis um, based on what that period is. So whenever we draw a graph, that period, that's just how wide I'm going to make my x-axis, and then I'm going to draw it based off my graph that I'm making. Okay. And then the last thing, that number on the end, um, that plus h, well, whatever you add something to the end, that's just going to shift it vertically. So the h is a vertical shift. Okay. So, for example, if you see a problem like this, and it says determine the amplitude and period, okay, amplitude, that's the number out front, so A is 4. The period is 2 pi divided by K, where K is the number that's in front of the X, so that's a 3. So the period on this graph would be 2 pi over 3. And that's it. So if I were to make a graph of this, which we're not doing yet, I would make my x-axis end at 2 pi over 3, and then that's how I'm going to draw it. I'm going to start here, it's going to go down, up, and it's going to end there. And that would be one cycle, and so I'm just going to create my x-axis to, to fit that. Okay, this one. The amplitude is not negative 3. It's 3. Okay, now. That negative sign is going to, what does it do? When you, what, do you, what happens when you multiply by a negative? It flips the graph. So this graph would get flipped. But again, remember, the amplitude is the height. And height is always a positive number. So if I ask for the amplitude, it's 3, not negative 3. Okay? All right, period is 2 pi divided by whatever's in front of the x, which in this case is 2 pi. Oh, so 1. So this complete graph goes from 0 to 1, and that's how we make our x-axis, okay? Okay, so let's graph some of these, and I'll show you what they look like. So if you look at the directions, it says graph two complete cycles. So, <clears throat> again, this is just, I'm not always going to ask you to do this. Uh, matter of fact, on the bottom, I don't say to do that. So I just want to, I need you to understand these go on infinitely, you know, all the way to the left, all the way to the right. They never stop. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to graph that. But um, if I don't ask you specifically for that, then you can just graph one cycle, okay? So to graph, what you need to know is you need to know that I'm getting ready to graph a sine graph. I know that in general, a sine graph starts at the origin. It goes up to its high point, down. Okay, I, I want to have an idea of what that graph looks like before I start to actually graph it. So I've got my, I've got my sine graph. I know it has an amplitude of 5. 
I need to know the period. I need to know how wide this is. Well, since there's nothing in front of the x, there's nothing that's like horizontally stretching or compressing this, so the period is just a normal 2 pi. Okay? So that's all I need for this one. So I'm going to graph this. So again, I'm going to make two cycles. So I'm going to make a cycle here, and I'm going to make a cycle there. So first, this one. A, the period is 2 pi. So that means the end of my graph is right here. Now, this is what you're always going to do. You're going to make your x-axis. You're going to make it as wide as you need it to be. So you need to know where your end is. Then you're going to cut that in half. So that's pi. And then you're going to cut those two halves into quarters. So I'm going to put a little dash there and a little dash there. Okay, and now I have one, two, three, four, five increments that I'm going to use to graph my sine graph. My x-intercept, my high point, my x-intercept, my low point, and then back to the x-intercept. So I know the amplitude goes up to five. One, two, three, four, five. And it goes down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. So here's what my sine graph would be. It's going to start at the origin. This first increment, I'm going to be at my high point. Okay? This is pi over 2. I usually don't label my quarters because it gets too cluttered. i got too much going on there. So this is pi over 2. It goes up to 5. Then it comes down to the x-axis. My next little increment here should be down at my low point, negative 5, and then back up to the x-axis. So this is what one cycle of that sine graph looks like. If I wanted a second, I would probably go over here, make this negative 2 pi, cut that in half, cut those into quarters, and I'd put a, a, a cycle over here. Now, think about this. This is not like a mirror image. This graph is a wave that keeps going. So as this line is going down, it's going to continue to go down to its low point. Then back up to the x-axis. Then it's going to hit its high point, and then it's back down again. And so the second cycle would be over here. Like that. Okay, and now you can kind of see that continuous wave going. Okay, B, that's a cosine graph. So cosine starts high goes down to its low point, and then ends high. That's what a cosine is going to look like. So I want to be thinking about that. All right, I've got an amplitude of 2. I've got a period of 2 pi over 2. Okay, that's going to affect the period. That means I just have a period of pi. So the only thing that's going to happen is, when I go to draw my graph, I'm going to draw the exact same thing, I'm going to go out to the end of my graph, but I'm going to call that pi. So that's what my cycle is. That's my interval. So that's how I'm going to label my x-axis. I am then going to cut that in half. So that's pi over 2. I am then going to cut those two halves into quarters. Nothing changes. It's just the labeling of the x-axis that's different. Okay? So those are the points I'm going to use. I need an amplitude up to, down to, so that's 2 and that's negative 2. And so now I can draw my cosine graph. I'm going to start at the high point, come down. So this first interval, here it's pi over 4 now. Over here it was pi over 2. doesn't matter. It's still, whatever that interval is, that's where your next point should be. And for cosine, it's going to be the x-axis. Then I'm going to go down to my low point, negative 2, back up to the x-axis, and then back up to my high point. Every single time, that's what it's going to look like. Again, second interval, one, two, three, four. Again, this should be continuous. So if I'm flowing this way, it's going to come down, down to the low point, back up to the x-axis, and then up to my high point. And it'll look something like that. There's my second cycle. Okay? Now, the next one. Amplitude is 1. Positive 1, that's my amplitude. That's how high this graph is. But that negative out front means that we're going to flip this graph. Okay, this is a cosine graph. So what's going to happen is this. Normally, cosine starts at its high point and ends at its high point. Well, this is going to get vertically flipped. It's going to start at its low point and then go up and then end at its low point. That's it. 
not a big deal. Okay, what else is going on with this? We've got our amplitude. That 2 is going to affect the period. So again, our period is going to be 2 pi. It's always 2 pi over k, but in this case our k is a 2. So 2 pi over 2, so it's just plain pi. So again, go out, call that pi, that's your period, cut it in half, cut it into quarters. Our amplitude is 1, so I only need to go up 1 and down 1. And then for this cosine graph, I'm going to start at the low point because of that negative. So we're going to start down here at negative 1, and then what's the cosine do? The next one hits the x-axis. The next one is your high point, your next one is back to the x-axis, and then this low point here. So There, that's one cycle. And then you could complete another cycle over here, two, three, four, where you're going to go up, up to your high point, down, and then down to your low point. And that'd be two cycles. You could do a third cycle over here, a fourth cycle, a fifth cycle, whatever. These go forever. Um, I just asked you to do two. Okay? Now, the only thing we haven't done yet are any vertical shifts. So the next two are going to have some vertical shifts. Okay? So again, sine graph. Keep thinking that. Four. That's my amplitude. Period is two pi over two. So pi. Um, and then this negative 2 is going to, that's our h value, negative 2, because it's going to shift down 2. Now, for this one, <coughs> oh, I've been bad. I did not follow my directions. My direction said find the domain and range of all of these. Well, your domain is always all real numbers, so that's not a problem. But you do need to make sure you understand what the range is. Okay, so by vertically stretching this graph, so I'm going to go ahead and write it domain is all real numbers, but your range is now everything from negative 5 to positive 5. Okay, negative 5 to 5. That's, that's the range on that one. Okay, again, domain, all real numbers, but the range would be everything from 2 to negative 2. Well, negative 2 to positive 2. Always write, go from smaller to bigger. Okay, and then this one is negative 1 to 1. Okay, as far as your range goes. Now that's important because your range, the range is going to get shifted a little funny on these. Okay, so if I was going to graph this, now for this one I'm only going to graph one cycle. I'm going to graph the period, so I'm going to make my, I need pi, there's pi, and there's pi over 2, and then there's my quarters. Always, you're going to go out a certain amount, cut it in half, cut them into quarters. That's what you're going to use. Now, the amplitude is 4, but this also has a vertical shift down 2. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go down 2, that's negative 2, and then I'm going to draw a dotted line. Now this is not like a horizontal asymptote or something. This is, it's called a midline. This is the middle of my graph. Okay, this is a sine graph, so it's kind of like I've taken the x-axis and moved it down. And now I'm just going to graph everything based off that dotted line. I'm going to ignore my x-axis. It's kind of hard to do. Um, sometimes as you're doing your points, you're, you want to stop at the x-axis because you're used to it. But we're going to use this dotted line as our x-axis. So since our amplitude is 4, we need to go 1, 2, and then 3, 4. So that's 2. And then we need to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So what's that? Negative 6. We were already at negative 2. Then we went down 4 more, so we're at negative 6. So by labeling my y-axis that way, that's actually, that's your range. That's the range of this graph from negative 6 to 2. That's the low and the high point. Okay? To graph this, I'm going to start at that midline. So Sign starts in the middle, starts at the origin usually, so we're going to pretend that that dotted line and the y-axis are our origin. And then we're going to go up to our high point, which is 2, down to our midline, so skip the x-axis, then go down to your low point, and then back up to the x-axis, okay, that midline. And there you go.
domain, still all real numbers, but the range is everything from negative 6 to 2. All right, last one. Cosine. Okay, so we know what we're graphing. Starts high, ends high, usually, unless it got flipped. Um, what do we have here? We have an amplitude of 3. Period. All right. This one's kind of tricky. you got to try to figure out what the period is on this. It is 2 pi divided by whatever's in front of the x. So we're, di being, di we're being divided by a fraction, but dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Okay, so this is actually 2 pi times, and then I'm going to flip it, 2 over pi. That's what we're going to do. Now, this isn't very hard. The pi's cancel because one's in the top and one's in the bottom, meaning I have a period of four. Okay, so this one, when we go to make our x-axis, we're just going to go out to four. That's a four. We're not in pi's or anything. It's just that's the number four. That's the number two, one, and three. And those are our increments we're going to use when we graph this. Okay. Our amplitude is 3, so normally you'd go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, but this has got a little vertical shift as well. So everything's going to get shifted up 1, which means I need to go up 1 on the y-axis. I didn't go up high enough. Okay, Just going up 3 and down 3, um, I wasn't up high enough. So this is 4, and then when I went down 3, I'm not going to use that. That negative 3 isn't going to be my bottom anymore. Negative 2 is going to be the low point. Okay, so graph the cosine graph. Start high, high point, 4. Come down to the midline, down to your low point, back up to the midline. This is where it's sometimes it's easy to just go to the x-axis and just put a point there. Go up to the midline, and then you go up to your high point. That is one cycle of my cosine graph. Domain. All real numbers, but the range is everything from negative 2 to 4. Negative 2 to 4. Those are the y values. All right, that's it. Take a look at your worksheet. Try these graphs and let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks.